words to end today's broadcast but i want to share the word of god with you and i want uh, to awaken you to align yourself with god's vision right i want you to awaken and align yourself to be part of the work of god to be part of the will of god to be part of the plan of god align yourself with god's vision praise the name of the living god I will read from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses and verses 18. The Bible says, All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He says, All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You see, uh, there are so many people who there are so many people who live this life uh, pursuing their own selfish interests, not aligning themselves with God's vision. There are so many people who live life for themselves. They live life for them and their stomachs. Others live life for them and uh, their siblings and uh, their family. It is all about them. Uh, they don't live life uh, to, to, to seek what God is doing and to be part of it. But what's God's vision to start with? God's vision, it's, uh, it's that men may come to the knowledge of him. All right? Uh, let, me read, um, let me read for you in the book of uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 4. Oh, praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter 2 and verses 4. For the Bible says, uh, we, I will begin from verses 3. The Bible says, This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. Then it goes on to my favorite verse for the Bible. Say, verse 5 it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom to be testified in due time. And uh, uh, based on that verse, we, 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 in the past, we have been doing some programs called Yes, We Are or Only Jesus. For the Bible has declared there is, that there is only one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, meaning that Jesus Christ is the only solution for the world. Jesus Christ is only God's solution given to the world. There is no one who can receive help from God apart from Jesus Christ. Now, back to what we were saying. What's God's vision? It's that men will come to the knowledge of the truth. For the word of God has said that God desires all men. He desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. This is God's vision. This is what he wants you to be part of. He wants you to also desire that men will be saved and they will come to the knowledge of truth. He wants you to desire that the gospel is, will be preached. He wants you to desire to see souls being born every day in his kingdom. And you need to be part of that vision. You need to be part of God's dream. Connect your dreams with his dream. Connect whatever you do with God's vision. Align with God's vision. Purify your motives with the love of God. Purify your motives with the desires of God. What does God want? He wants men to be saved. He wants men to come to the knowledge of Him. He wants to work with you. And He wants you to be part of this. He wants to use you to influence others to know Him. To influence others to experience the power of God. Soul winning should be the compelling motive and compelling force in your life. The gospel being preached to men should be the compelling force and your motive. It should be what you live for every day. You do not have necessarily to be a pastor. He does not say this is for pastors. He does not say this is for evangelists. He does not say this is for apostles. No, this is God's vision concerning every man. And so every man ought to be part of it. Every man ought to be part of what God is doing. Praise the name of the living God. You must understand that you are first of all a Christian. You are first of all a child of God. Before being a politician, 
before being a teacher, before being an accountant, before being a banker, before being a doctor, before being a mother. To God, you are first of all. God does not call you someone who's husband. No. He calls you his child. He calls you his own. Before every other title, before whatever men have called you, before whatever people have identified you with, you are first of all a Christian. You are first of you are first of all identified with the life of God, identified with the power of God, identified with the Spirit of God. For the Bible says, "He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with God." Therefore, this is a calling for you to express to express God wherever you are, at your workplace in the hospital, in the taxi, while you are driving, while you are walking, while you're in your family, with family members. Let the expansion of God's kingdom be your number one passion. I pray for you, child of God, that the expansion of the kingdom of God will be your heartbeat. You see, when this is your heartbeat, when God's vision is your heartbeat, therein lies true joy. You can only find true joy and fulfillment and all the blessings that you could ever, ever desire and ever want when you align yourself with the vision of God. There is a depth in God. There is a realm of God that you can never tap into until your desires align up with these desires. Until your wants align up with your wants. Until you seek first the kingdom of God, what he wants, his righteousness, and then all the other things will be added unto you. There is a death in God. There is a realm of joy. And fulfillment whenever you know, whenever you are aligned, whenever you are committed to the gospel, to the spread of the work of God. Whenever you give yourself to support the word of God, the work of God, wherever you give yourself to be part of ministry, wherever you give yourself to be part of the church business, wherever you give yourself to be part of winning souls, you will see the power of God every time. You know, Jesus said, he said to, all, to all those who believed in him when he rose again, he said to all of them, he did not say to some, he said to all of them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is Mark chapter 16 and verses 15. In Matthew chapter 24 and verses 14, he said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Child of God, you must realize that the instruction, this instruction, this command to take the gospel of Jesus Christ, to take the message of salvation to the ends of the earth, to the towns and to the villages all around us, wasn't just for the pastors. You must realize that and you must believe with it. Believe it, the earlier the better. It is not just for the evangelists, but it is for every Christian. All of us, let me read for you in the book of 2 Timothy in a few minutes. Oh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. You're going to realize something. Listen to what the word of God says. He says, who has made us sufficient ministers. Talking about the whole body of Christ. He says, God has made us sufficient ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is not only for the pastor. The Holy Spirit does not only reside in the evangelist, or in the apostle, or in the prophet. No, the Holy Spirit resides in every Christian, in every child of God. And his presence in our lives, he says he has made us sufficient ministers of the new covenant sufficient ministers 
of the gospel meaning in every christian in every child of god there is the potential to preach the gospel there is the potential to be part of expanding the kingdom of god there is the potential to spread the message of god in different ways Praise the name of the living God. We are bearers of the glad tidings of salvation. We are, a, we are bearers of the banner of God's power of salvation. Each one of us has been commissioned to reach out to those that are living in darkness with the light of salvation. Each one of us has a responsibility to present this good God, to present this healing God, to present this blessing God to the world. He says we are a light in the dark world. He said we are the light of the world. Child of God, you are a light in the dark world. Therefore glow, shine with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let the glory of God shine through you to others. Let the light of God shine through you to others. Don't seek to hurt people. Don't seek many's downfall. Seek that they will come to the knowledge of God. Seek that they will get to know God. Do those things that represent Jesus Christ. Do those things that make it easy for the gospel to be spread. Every hour, every day, you are God's man on the hour. You hold forth the word of God. You hold forth the life, the word of life. You, in you, deep on the inside of you, you are, you are a portal for someone to, to see God. You are an opportunity for someone to experience God. The eyes of many who are lost, through you God has determined that they will see light. They will be opened to know that God is good. You know, men have blamed God for circumstances in their life. Men have blamed God for every bad thing that has been happening around them. But God has trusted us with the responsibility of preaching his word. With the responsibility of spreading his goodness. With the responsibility of spreading his power. Praise the name of the living God. Tomorrow, um, rather, rather not tomorrow, today is Friday. So uh, we begin praying from Monday to Friday. All right. Now on Monday, I will be talking about three realms of vision. Three realms of vision. All right. And I want you to prepare. I want you to prepare because it is until you align up with God's vision that you will see the victory that has been promised us by God. Praise the name of the living God. May God bless you. May God lead you today. May God guide you. May the power of God be evident in your life. Every morning, every afternoon, and every evening. May you see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Surely goodness and mercy. May it follow you in Jesus' mighty name. I love you. God bless you. Amen.